Hi, my name's Denise Westbrook. Today I'm going to groom Teddy. He's a miniature poodle. Definitely up to measure. Um, but he's a really nice boy and the owner likes him in a teddy bear trim. So it's not conventional. But you will also find you get lots of cockapoos in this trim as well, if they have a suitable coat. So we're going to do lots of round sections like we would on a Bichon Frise. So first of all we're going to take down some of this back coat. And I'm going to use a comb attachment which is a 16mm. Again, I'm going to work into sections. I'm going to take some of this coat away. I'm not going to go right into the towel, so I'm going to stop just before and skim away. And because I want to leave a nice round bum, I'm not going to come down into that section. I'll scissor that. I'm not going to come into this section on the leg. I'm going to make sure I come forward slightly. And I'll scissor that area in as well. I will skim off so it gives me less scissor work. And again, I'm going to lift the coat, make sure I get all the little ends, and come across the coat really smoothly. And all these little ends that I get off are what will make it look like a nice scissor finish, although it isn't. Good boy, Teddy. So I wouldn't go over it loads and loads of times, but just enough times to get rid of the worst. I'm going to follow my line underneath, but I'm only going to go as far as the eye can see. I'm not going to go anywhere where I can't clearly see, because I may catch a piece of skin or something that's, um, that I could catch and split open. Again, I want to leave more neck on this dog, so I'm definitely going to take out under the throat, because that will give him more length of neck and a much cleaner underline here. But I'm just being careful how much I come into this side here because I want to bring that up into the neck. So I'm going to bring it down and skim away. And again, I'm going to put one clipper width all the way between the front leg. And his head is anything in front of the Osport. On a round head, I also take out that little area there. Teddy, which I call the jaw junction, which is a little upside down V, and I normally go against the coat under there. And then when the dog turns sideways, you get a much cleaner throat area on the dog, which in turn will lengthen his neck. Remember, when you come under this area here, watch this flap of skin, because you can quite easily trap it between the clippers. So if you're going to come to this piece of skin, always come down onto it so you don't catch it between the clippers. I've left more hair here. If I take this hair away, I'm opening up that gap. So I want to leave the excess hair there. Because when it's finished, I want to create a nice line that comes from his leg up through his rib cage and up through his neck. OK, so I'm going to continue down onto the shoulder. And just take that shoulder area away. So again, it's like a lamb trim, but instead of leaving the area's a little bit more sharp, like we would on a poodle, I'm going to soften the areas by rounding them all off. But I'm just taking away the excess hair that I don't need to save me time on scissor work. And again, I'm going to lift the coat and go over again, just make sure that I've got all the little bits of hair off, because that'll give me a much nicer finish. And I've used parts of this dog's body to set my pattern, like his pointer shoulder is here. So I've used that to set my pattern, and his pointer buttock, I've used that to set my pattern to leave that padding. And I've purposely done that and used his point of his body 
so as I can set the pattern equally on both sides. Do one clip of it all the way through the front legs. And where I've set my two points of shoulder, the skim off so as I can see now that he's equal on both sides and that will make my scissor work much easier. I'm going to pick up his front legs just so as I can check out under his tummy and get that excess hair that I couldn't see clearly from both sides because I don't want to cut an area that I can't clearly see. But I'm not going to run my blade into this section of skin because I will catch the skin there. I'm also making sure that I'm equal on both sides of his neck as I come down because again it just makes it easier for me to scissor in the neck area so that I don't have to balance it up. It's not as hard for me to balance it up because actually I've done it equal both sides. On Teddy, I'm going to put in a bit of angulation on the back end. So I'm just going to very gently scoop that angulation out which I'm going to find by bending his knee. And that's the back of the knee. So I'm just going to come from underneath the point of buttock and just that section there I'm going to scoop out. I'm leaving that section because I want to round it off. And I can just scoop to the side and just get rid of all that extra hair that I don't particularly need. Just saves me less scissor work. Okay, so now we're ready to go on to the scissor work. So when I work, I've done created my top line I'm now going to create a baseline and then I'm going to build my building. So this baseline, when I go around the foot, it's like building foundations. I need to get it nice and even and straight or rounded as the case may be. And then my building will come up off of that shape. If this is wavy or skinny and my leg needs to be wider, my building will go a bit like the crooked house. So I have to make sure that my foot, my foundation, is nice and even exactly where I want to build my leg from. So now that I've done under the pad, I've purposely not gone really tight on the Mickey Mouse ears because this leg is going to be cylinder. Once I've done the pad and the foot, so always in a routine, I've done under the pad and I've done under the pad with a faulty blade. And I skimmed across the pad because it's far safer for me to do that than use a pair of scissors. If he had something caught inside his pad, then I'd have to clip that out. But as a general rule of thumb, I don't clip out the hair in between his pads because it's there for added protection. So now on his leg, I'm going to lift out everything so that I can see clearly what I've got. I may use a scissor spray. That will help me to control the hair a little bit better. And I know I need to build my building so that it comes up to here. So first of all, I'm going to round off my foot. I do the front line first. I'm using curves and I can go all the way around the foot and put in the side. Twist them around and do this side. Good boy, Teddy. All the way around to the line I've already put at the back. And I'm not going to make this foot too skinny because he's a big boy. And if I give him little tiny feet, it means that instead of his feet or his legs being built like a cylinder like this, they will actually be a little bit like that. Skin at the bottom and wider, which we don't. We want it a cylinder all the way up. Once I'm happy with that shape, standing from a side view, I'm going to trim the front of the leg into the shape that I want. Now this particular dog has more of a terrier leg. And what that means is, it comes from the highest point of the tuck up, scoops around, gives this dog a nice turn of stifle, which is like, like giving a waistline on a lady. And then when I get to the centre of the pastern, which is here, I'm going to come straight down to the front of the toe. So, if this dog doesn't have a nice turn of stifle, I'm going to make it look as if it does have one. And I always do it from the side view because I can box in my shape and see exactly what I want to leave there and the shape I want to put on. And I'm happy to go across the coat when I'm blocking in shape. 
The second line I'm going to do is the one at the back of the hock. And we always want hock hair left because that gives him a nice kick out. So I'm just going to round it off into the back of his carpal pad. So I'm looking on the side view. Then the next area I want to take care of, I've already clipped out this little area here, but I also know that I want to give him more of a rounded bottom like a Bichon frieze. So I'm going to hold his towel up and I'm perfectly going to use my curves and give him a round bum. Just going to check where his bits are to make sure I'm nowhere near them. And I'm going to come into that area that I've clipped out. And you can see I'm going across the coat and from this area I'm looking at my profile. Once I've come into that area, my line's going to come out to the hop and come back into the foot. Just double checking how much hair I've got. I don't want to leave too much hair on the back end because it just makes the dog look extra long. I'm going to create an A line that comes from his hip out. So that's the next line I'm going to put in. So I'm blocking in four lines. And because I'm blocking in shape, I'm happy to go across the coat. Cut away the excess that I don't need. Look on the inside of his leg and do exactly the same. But remember, check out his bits and make sure you're not going to catch anything. Now I'm also making sure that this dog's stacked correctly. And that means that his toe is in line with the point of buttock. And if I stack both legs like that when I'm cutting them, I'm pretty much guaranteed to get the same shape on both sides. If I have one leg placed forward and one leg placed back when I'm trimming him, it means that I could have one muscle sucked in and one muscle popping out and when the doggy goes on the floor and walks away, both legs will be different. So I make sure they have the legs in the same position when I'm trimming them. I'm using curved scissors to do this as well, because this leg is a circle. If I took all the hair away, it is circular underneath the bone. So it just saves a bit of work for me. Once I'm happy with that shape, I'll now get my straight scissors. I'm going to lift out all the hair, make sure my leg is positioned correctly. Some pet dogs are not necessarily built correctly. So if I want to bring the, leg, bring the leg into the correct position, some dogs find it uncomfortable. So just bring the leg back to where is comfortable for the dog. But make sure that when you trim the other side, you've got it in exactly the same position. I'm going up the hair shafts. I'm going and up the hair shafts and down the hair shafts put on a finish. On the inside of the leg, I can't face my scissors up in the air because it can be a little bit dangerous. So I will have to go across the coat on the inside of the legs just because it's safer. And if I do leave any marks on him, the chances are the owner won't see them. because it'll be on the inside of the leg. So I'm now going over this dog, lifting up the hair, and putting a finish on him. And as you can see, he's going to be a little bit more rounded than a poodle shape, although he is a poodle. A poodle's coat is a wool type coat. It always grows in an anagen stage. That means that the coat is always growing. It doesn't grow, mature and die like a double-coated dog or a hand-stripped dog. He should regularly come in, uh, Teddy regularly comes in about every six weeks for a haircut because this, he does have quite a profuse coat and it allows us to keep it under control, keep his skin healthy by giving him regular baths. The owner is also very good as well at maintaining his coat. I'm going to check out the inside of this leg by lifting the leg over. Very gently lift it out to the side because I don't want to hurt his hip. And I'm making sure that I'm sizzling, scissoring round 
because that's the shape of the leg. I'm being careful of where his bits are and making sure I'm coming up the side of them. And I'm not going to catch anything. And before I've done any trimming on this dog, I've already done a health check on him to check that he doesn't have any lumps or bumps or skin tags or warts that I could catch or any back dew claws that I could catch in my comb and accidentally rip off. And it's always good practice to do a health check on the dogs. And if you find anything unusual, then report it to the owner who should then go to the vet and seek veterinary attention. I'm trying to tease out any little hairs that I've missed. I'm being careful not to get sucked in to push my scissors into deep there because it won't be an A-line, it'll be the opposite, it'll be a bit like a V-line. So I'm always conscious that this leg has to come out. And again, I don't want to leave excess hair on this dog that as soon as it goes to walk out the shop, everything's bobbing around and it's going to get caught up in twigs when the owner takes it for a walk. I'm going to take, leave it into a trim that she can maintain, but also is functional. When I groom the line into the back of the knee, I try to bring my line slightly round the side. So it doesn't matter where you're standing on the dog, you can always see angulation. And again, once I've done a section, I don't dismay dismiss that and move on somewhere else, my eyes will always be going over all the sections I've already groomed, just in case I have missed anything. And then I can just do a quick fix and go over it. Up into this tuck up, you get excess hair, so I'm making sure that I come around and just round that off. And again, it will give a little bit of a waistline. Right, so I bring all that hair over to one side just to check that I've got no extra hair going to pop out. Round it all off. Again, don't cut anything that you can't clearly see. Okay, so when I sit in his bum, I can lift that coat up and put his towel where it naturally sits. Then I can round that area off. Sometimes curves are nice on this area because they can already put in the curves that you want. I don't always scalp around his anus because sometimes I don't think it looks very nice. So I, want, I clear that area but sometimes I don't want to make it look a bit like a target. Everything we've done on this leg, if you could do exactly the same on the other side. So now on the front leg, my first line, if I stand his leg correctly, so his elbow should be in line with his withers, so I'm standing him correctly. And my first line is going to be at the front of his leg. But first of all, I'm just going to set in my foot so I can see where my line comes to. Put your leg back, Teddy. Good boy. So I'm going to tidy his foot. And again, I don't want to make his foot too skinny. I want to make sure it's the same width so that I can continue the cylinder all the way up his front leg. Good boy, Teddy. I'm going to pick up Teddy's other foot, and then that way I may stop him lifting up that leg. I've angled my scissors, so they're going to be tighter on the bit of hair that's going to hang on the floor, so it make that leg last a little bit longer. And they're angling out, so actually from the, when you look over the leg you can't see that it's tighter at the foot. Once I'm happy with the shape, I could do a comb over, just bring all the hair over to see if I've left any bits. 
and again in the opposite direction. So I call those comb overs. And once I'm happy with that, the next one I'm going to put in will be the front of his leg. So from his toe, I'm going to build a line all the way up, which will come just underneath his upper shoulder there, his shoulder, uh, upper arm, sorry. And then he has a scapula and an upper arm, so I'm going to just put in the shape of the upper arm there. So I'm going to clear that excess hair away. And from there, it now comes into the front of this leg. Once I'm happy with that, I'm going to come to the side and I'm going to create my A line that comes all the way down to the ground again. Well I'm going to come off that shoulder all the way down to the ground. And again, I'm going to cross the coat because I will go over and put a finish on the coat. Do the inside of the leg as well. So now I've blocked out three sides. So now I will go over all this leg and put a finish on the leg. A little bit of spritz will help me just control the hair. And I want parallel lines. So I make sure that all of this hair that's sticking out as I look over the top of the dog will give me a nice clean line down. I don't want to leave no bits sticking out like that. So again, make sure you stood correctly. And now I'm going to go up the hair shafts and take off all that excess coat that I don't need. Or I can go down the hair shafts. When I clipped in this front leg and I left a pad here, I made sure that I come back on the leg a little bit so that I didn't take out that hair there. And that allows me to bring my cylinder leg up into the body. And the same when I've done this section, I purposely didn't take this line in too tight. I made sure I come out a little bit with it. So now keep teasing out the hair. And go over and tidy. And I want this front leg to be the same width as the back leg. Some people pick up the front legs when they're scissoring it. So I can pick up his front leg, but I would hold him on the toe where I know that I've already trimmed. And I personally would put his leg in a standing position. Put your head up, sweetie. So. Because if his leg, foot, toe is out, and I scissor across the front of his leg, when I release the foot and he stands up, I've made a hole here. So make sure that he's in a standing position. I'm touching the hair that I've already scissored, so I don't need to go over that. And I'm not distorting any lines that I need to scissor. And then from there I can come off the front of the toe, which actually gives me exactly the same line from the toe up. Leg up, Teddy. And again, warning that you're going to pick up his leg, don't just grab it and pull it up. Put his toe in the stand position gently. And scissor around that leg. And my centre line, I'm just going to go around and tidy all the excess hair that's hanging off. And again on the inside, Tidy that as well. Once I'm happy, tease it all out. And go over and take all the little ends off. And again, I can't look flat on this hair and scissor it. I have to look at the profile. So as I get all the little tads off the profile. And either he, I gently move his body so as I can see the profile, profile, or I gently move my body so as I can see the profile as well. When I'm holding my scissors, I hold them with my little finger into the finger rest. And then my four other three thing, fingers are underneath the scissors. And that allows me to have balance. And you can see they're quite happily sitting there and quite sturdy. My thumb is the only thing that moves and that will be the motor of my engine and this will be the, the wheels of stability. So as the blade goes up and down, that will cut the hair and you need to open your blade nice and wide. These scissors as well have a very short shank. That means I don't have to undo, open up my thumb as much as scissors with long shanks on them.
Again with these scissors, if I balance them on my hand here and let them balance and turn them around, my thumb should sit quite fun comfortably, comfortably into the hole and I can turn the scissors around and put my fingers into them. And also I don't want my thumb too far through because I won't have balance. I need to make sure my thumb is on the ends and sometimes my thumb is barely in them. If, you have, if you're struggling with that, then put a, uh, maybe a plaster over the hole or a finger cut over the hole and that will stop your thumb going through. And I would recommend scissoring toys um, or anything like that that you can scissor around to get good scissor action. Teddy, come here, sweetie. Teddy, come here. Good boy. Good boy, Teddy. Okay, so again, I'm teasing out the hair. Tidying over all the little bits that I've missed. I'm using a long comb that allows me to get plenty of sections without having to go backwards and forwards with a smaller comb and it saves me keep putting the comb into the hair because every time the comb goes into the hair it's actually flattening the hair again. But it's good to get a book on basic construction of the dog so you understand what's going on underneath this coat. And if I lift Teddy's leg up, I'm just going to check out the inside of it. But I've got his foot again in standing position. And I don't want to take a lot off the back of this leg. Because again, that's what fills in the gap here to make him look a little bit more squarer. And again, that excess hair that's there. Make sure you tease it up at this stage and just tidy it off. Good boy, Teddy. And stand everything in the natural position. And my eyes are going to little bits that I've missed. So just go over them and tidy them. It takes a little bit of time to get it neat. And again, you can see I'm going across the coat a little bit. As long as you go back over and go up and down the hair shafts, you'll get a neat finish. And what you definitely don't want to do is bob up and down. Because every time you bob up and down, you'll dip into the coat and make another hole. So try to keep really flat on the coat as you're scissoring. If you do accidentally make a hole, so you get a pair of blenders. Sorry. These are a little bit too wide. But if you get a pair of blenders and you just soften all the way around the outside of the hole, you'll be able to hide that hole. Not completely, but it will make it less visible. Going back to different scissors, the scissors I've just picked up here are a pair of chunkers. And the difference with these is that they take hair away. Once you've cut the hair with this, it's gone. Once you cut the hair with this, you've only taken some of it away. So you do have a chance to go back over what you've done and recorrect the shape, although you may have a little bit of hair gone out of it. These particular ones have got a really straight edge on them. They're not serrated, so they won't texturise the coat. They will give me a scissor finish, providing I don't bounce and I stay in one place. So they're quite a good pair of scissors if you're unsure and frightened of using the straight scissors. You can always practice with a pair of chunkers. But again, I'll do exactly the same as what I would with a normal pair of scissors. Just follow the way the coat grows and follow your lines around. So this hair is growing round, so I'm growing, going following the way it grows. And I'm just going to check out the inside of this leg, and I've gently lifted up the opposite leg, so as I can get nice and neatly under there, without causing him any discomfort. Remember, I can't cut round corners. I won't cut round corners because I can't clearly see that I'm not cutting something off that I shouldn't be. So always move your body around so you can see what you're cutting. Good 
boy, Teddy. Isn't that? Teddy's a little bit stiff today. He won't move around the table, will you? Okay. Again, I can see a little bit heavy on the bottom of this foot. So I'm just tidying it up. And again, I want this front foot leg to be equal width to the back leg. So I'm conscious of that all the time, making sure that I'm making it the same width. So now I'm going to trim in Teddy's tail. He naturally holds his tail up, but I'm going to give him a long cigar shape. So if I lift the tail and find the end, I can trim, put my nail over the tail, so I'm not going to catch the bone, and trim off the end. Now the best way for me to do this tail is pull it out and fan it left and right. I'm going to scissor over the top and take it down to the length that I want it. So it's just going to be a long cigar shaped tail. Good boy Teddy. And where I've got it off of his body I can just blend it into his body. Still getting rid of all hair that I don't want. Underside. So I'm just getting rid of the hair and then I'm going to go over and put a finish on it. So again, I'm holding right on the tip of the tail. Lift the hair up so I can clearly see what I need to get rid of. Give me a little shake and again go over. Pretty much got the shape that I want. I'm just going to go over and put a finish on it. The only thing that's moving is my thumb. And I'm moving my body to look all the way around to look for the profile. And tease the tail out. Sometimes it's uncomfortable to keep moving the dog, so it's much better if you can maybe move the section of his body and move your body around accordingly. There's a centre line, so I'm making sure that both sides look equal. Taking it a little bit shorter under here, just so it's a little bit more hygienic for him. Once you're happy with the shape and it's balanced and it's equal on both sides, I can just go over and put a finish on it again. Come here, Teddy. Okay, and we'll just lift the tail up from that angle. Drop everything back. Just check that I've got all the hair again. Always make sure you know the way the dog holds the tail before you start scissoring the tail. Good boy, Teddy. Good boy. Okay, so that's the finished tail. Now we're going to move on to his head. So now we're going to trim Teddy's head. The first thing I'm going to do is move the hair away so that we clearly see his eyes. And being black, it's really hard to see what's going on under here. And if I move this out of the way, I want to clear the hair that is going to stick or poke in the corner of his eye. It's just that little piece there. And then I would come across the bridge of his nose. So it's just a straight line across the bridge of his nose. Now normally on Lars or Apsos or dogs like that, I don't take any hair off the top of their nose. But on this particular dog, where the hair grows like clock springs, within no time it's poking up in the air and you can't see his eyes clearly. Teddy. So the owner likes us to take that bridge of the nose away. So I've cleared out in between his eyes. I'm just going to take that bridge of his nose away as well. But I'm going to make sure, if I look at his nose, which is the centre, I'm going to make sure that if I come down to, say, this far, I'm going to do it equal on both sides. So I just take a clean line across the bridge of his nose up to his stop. 
And again, these are much safer around the eyes because they've got a flat edge. So I'm not going to poke. If I do poke, I'm not going to do a lot of damage like I would with a pair of scissors with a sharp edge. That's my clean line. And that now allows us to lay down the other side as opposed to sticking up like clock springs. Take a little bit more around his eyes. And a little bit more on this side. If we wanted this hair to grow long, like on the Lars and Shih Tzus, when it grows long, it sends a part and it hangs down and it doesn't poke him in the eye. But when we start trimming around the corners of his eye, within about two weeks, it's going to start to grow and it's going to poke him in the eye. So once we start trimming it, we always have to trim it to stop it causing an ulcer. The next area I'm going to look at is the visor. Now I'm aiming to create a round head, which is round from this angle, and from a side view, it should be round as well. A poodle naturally has long ear leathers, so I can't make this head look like a Bichon where their ears are lost into the head, and I don't particularly want him to as well. This is quite a good trim to put on cockapoos who naturally have long ear leathers as well. It's much softer than a clipped out nose on a poodle although this is a poodle. So I'm going to bring forward the front line that goes from corner of the eye to corner of the eye. And I'm going to take out the area just in front of his eye. But I don't want to go tight in here and tight in here because that would make my circle now come pinched in the middle and I don't want to do that. So look at both sides, make sure you've got it equal. I'm going to cut it that way. And then once I've done it and I'm happy and I've got some of that wood for the trees out of the way, some of the excess hair, and hold his head down and I can just improve that shape. And it's quite a big head, so I don't want to take this really, really tight. Okay, so now we're starting to see his eyes a bit more. Once I've done that, I can drop down another layer and just tidy up that layer. And I always say that this is a bit like a wedge out of a cake. If I turn him sideways, I've taken a wedge out of my cake. Okay, so once I've done the shape and I'm quite happy with that, I'm now going to go to the hair under his jaw. So I'll get his ear out of the way. Put your head up, mister. Drop all the hair down. Now I'm purposely holding the ear and the hair on the opposite side of his face. I'm not distorting any of this hair. So I haven't brushed it out beautifully, then I've stuck, stuck my hands all over it. I purposely them just on the opposite side of his face and I have his mouth shut, so there's no way I'm going to catch his tongue. So drop this down. And I'm looking at the outside corner of his eye, that is going to be my furthest point. And if the centre of the eye is my centre of my circle, I need equal at the top and equal at the bottom. So I'm going to round off my circle to the furthest part, point of the eye and then I'm going to start coming up. Now I've left a bit of hair on this dog's neck, so I'm going to blend this into the hair. This was a Shih Tzu and I took the body off really short and I'm giving it a round head. I'm quite happy to go tight to the base of the ear because the ear will just hang over and it will cover where I've gone really short. And where I've gone really short will allow the ear canal to breathe. But on Teddy he does have a neck left in so I need to leave some excess hair so as I can scissor it all in. So again, pop that line down, angle down. And again, when you've got a dog with a long muzzle, always angle it slightly down here because it softens the face. Once I'm happy with that, I'm going to turn him around and do exactly the same the opposite side. And I'm only going to hold the hair on this side. Now I'm not distorting anything that I've just brushed out this side. I'm going to run my eye from there, the line that I've cut, across to the opposite side. And straight away I've got my line where I need to trim. I'm going to go to the outside corner of the eye and I'm going to angle up. I'm not going to go tight to the base of the ear, just the same as on the other side. 
So this is my furthest point. Once I'm happy with that, I'll hold him on his nose and just underneath that lip to keep the mouth shut. And I'm going to join the two sides of my head together. And you can see I'm using curved scissors. So straight away, I'm already putting a curve on there, so it's making it much easier for me to do. And earlier on, on this round head, we took out the jaw junction, which is that upside down V. And now all I need to do is just make sure it's equal on both sides. And my scallop that side and this side are equal. I can, in this instance, just tidy up some of this hair going on under his throat. I'm quite happy with that being equal. Good boy, Teddy. Now I'm going to come to the side of Teddy. So I'm lift up all the hair on Teddy's head and I've come to the side of Teddy. And now I'm going to bring my line of his head so it comes out, round and back down. So I'm going to come up off them withers and take that excess hair away and bring it up into his round head. Have additional hair here, so as I'm not taking it out really tight there like a poodle. Or like a um, modern trim or whatever, where I want to elongate the neck. As you said before, Teddy's going to be in a much softer, rounder trim. So blend away that hair. He hasn't got a very good neck on Teddy, and that's probably because his shoulder placement is quite high. So therefore, if I can take it a little bit lower, just at the base of that neck, it will elongate his neck a little bit for me. So keep stepping back, have a look at what you've done. And imagine your line following all the way around. Does it flow? Because if it does, then that's good. We're happy to go with that. Bring the line up over the top of his head. And again, I don't want to make his head too small because he's quite a big boy. So I need to make everything in balance. So now you can see my circle start forming on the side view. Round off this head. And again, this area here, I want to round it off. So tease it up, because remember I want a circle here and I want a circle from the front. So ignore the ears, pretend they're not there, and I should round this off. and round underneath that jawline, because I don't want to see a solid, harsh line there. If I just come from underneath and just soften it, I've softened the whole face by doing that. Still always keep going for my circle. Good boy, Teddy. Tease it up in the air so I can see what areas I need to deal with. Go over. And again, remember, I want this haircut to last the customer maybe six weeks. Teddy. I oh, know, sweetie. Come here. We do always offer free visor trims for our customers because it just means that we don't have to take it extra short and it, the dog looks startled when we've done the haircut. Good boy, Teddy. Good boy, sweetie. the hair away so I can see what I'm dealing with. Keep lifting the hair up and out. Again, most of this trimming I've done with curved scissors. I'm going to follow that onto the other side. So all the time I'm looking at this side of the head and coming over onto the other side because I need to image that on the other side. So stand him up again because I don't want him scooping down. Good boy. And bring his neck up. 
And sometimes if you move his back legs back, it just drops everything down. And again, if you've got a dog that's messing you around on the table, you need to be calm. Because if you get anxious, the dog will feel that and sense that and it will get anxious as well. So I'll lift his ear up out of the way. Bring my line around. So it flows nicely around the back of the neck. And around the back of the ear. Keep blowing the hair away so I can clearly see what I'm dealing with. And on the other side, I went quite a little bit deeper, not really deep, but a little bit deeper there, just to give him a little bit more of a neckline. Good boy, Teddy. Yeah, down. Okay, so that's Teddy's head. And all I need to do now is take a little bit more of that. Let's just tidy up Teddy's ears. So I'm going to drop his ears down. Feel where the ear leather is, which is there. So if you don't accidentally want to cut into them. And now I'm quite happy to take off the shape that I want underneath. Which is a bevel. I think on Teddy is quite soft. So I would probably use a much finer pair of blenders to this. If I come underneath again and just soften that line, it makes it not as harsh. And if I've got excess hair here, I can just soften that into the top of his ear. I'm going to follow that onto the other side. Check out both sides, make sure they're equal. And I'm looking at both sides of his eye there. Is one side of his eye showing a little bit more than the other? So I'm just going to check that out. And I think it's probably that little bit of hair there that's making me not see that properly. Good boy, sweetie. Teddy. Good boy. Okay, I'm quite happy to go with that. So that's my finished round head. So today we've trimmed Teddy in the teddy bear trim. He's got a round head. We're scissoring his legs, his neck, his head and his tail. And we've used a 16mm comb attachment to go over the rest of the areas. Uh, Teddy needs to come in every six weeks and his owner regularly brings him in. She's really good at maintaining and washing him and she has a good big hairdryer at home to bath for him as well. Um, so she's one of our customers that does take good care of him of his coat. Um, he's a good boy. Um, like I say, he's got a real big heavy coat, but I think you'll agree he looks lovely in his teddy bear.